Over the weekend, there was a book signing at the Coles in the Lloyd Mall where author Mark Allard Will was signing his book, Siegfried Dragon Slayer. What brought the book signing to Lloyd Minster was a local connection. The uh, uncle of the illustrator, so Jasmine Redford being the illustrator out of Saskatoon, but her uncle Alan lives out here or just outside of Lloyd Minster. And uh, he is a friend with one of the managers here at the store, uh, recommended the book to said manager, and it's just gone from there. And uh, it ended up with me being invited out to do a signing. And it's always fun to, to bring this book out to new markets. The signing went from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. According to the author, it was a success. I've met um, several people um, who have brought copies. Wow. I've also met um, few, a few people that heard about it on PTLN and uh, made some new fans and new readers, which is always a, a plus. For the author, being able to bring his book to Lloydminster was a great experience. To get to do Lloydminster is fun because I think, as I said in the previous interview, like many uh, Saskatchewan folk or Albertans, I'm mostly used to uh, Lloydminster in terms of travelling through to Edmonton and back again, so to actually get to visit is really great. The 7th Annual Sirens and Sapphires Gala is just around the corner for the Lloydminster Rescue Squad, and this year's event has much involved. Our Shelby Clark spoke with them for more details. Joining us today for Primetime Local News is Ryan LeBlanc with the Lloydminster Rescue Squad. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Of course, no problem. We are here, you know, making it around here for the Sirens and Sapphires Gala. And this is supposed to be the seventh annual gala that's supposed to be coming up here, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, we've missed a, missed a couple of years uh, due to COVID and, and things that were happening around the world. So we're, we're excited to get back, uh, get back having our gala again. Perfect. I want to just kind of start off with talking about this gala, just for anybody out there that may not be aware too much of what's all involved in this and uh, why this is such a big event for the Lloydminster Rescue Squad. Now, what exactly is all involved in this gala? Yeah, so we have a, um, we have a, a committee that puts this gala on, um, and we're so thankful for them. And so we have a, a night where people gather w with us and, and celebrate our uh, our achievements and and how long we've come along with with Lloyd Rescue. Um, the other thing is is we have numerous sponsors that uh, you know help make this night happen. One of them being B Boundary Ford. We're uh, we're so grateful for the we're, for our partnership with them. Uh, they've they've just been tremendous for you know supporting Lloyd Rescue and our initiatives and things that we want to do. So we're so we're so thankful for them. Uh, Fountain Tire and Newcart Contracting. Uh, you know, there are a couple of our gold sponsors this year. Uh, Stingray Media is, is a gold sponsor and along with 1061 The Goat. We're, we're excited to have, have everybody on board to help help this year's gala. Um, we are selling out. It's not quite sold out yet, but it's getting there. Um, this year we'll feature Blackboard Jungle again, uh, the band that will be returning for our entertainment, as well as a silent and live auction that will happen at the at the gala. So we're excited for this year. It's going to be a good meal down at the Lloyd X as always. Um, so we're excited to uh, we're excited to to have this year uh, go on. Oh, perfect. Well, it sounds like it's definitely going to be a big and nice event for this year's gala. And for those previous years with this uh, event, how would you say that support has been from others in the community? Really good. You know, our community has always had our back and, and it's uh, it's such a heartwarming uh, feeling, you know, when when everybody stands behind us, when we're, we're trying to fundraise for the necessary equipment and, um, you know, the operation to run this organization is uh, is is a lot. So, I mean, we're 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 very fortunate and so grateful that our community helps out and stands behind us in time of need for us. So. And how nice does it feel to the rescue squad, of course, to be able to have this event back, you know, full, full circle and having a big event with, you know, the entertainment and the music and everything and with all the guests and just being able to have this a full out event now for this year. Yeah, we're so excited, you know, and I think people are, are excited to get back out again. Um, we've talked to quite a few people that are, are excited to come back to the gala and, and just have a good night out. You know, it's, uh, people have been stuck in their homes for a long time and, um, you know, people have been out recently for the summer year, but we're, we're sure looking forward to, uh, getting to see everybody again and, and, uh, talk about what's coming up in the new year. 
and you were saying that, you know, it's getting close to being kind of sold out, you know, well, especially with tickets and everything. And for people that want to get involved and definitely be able to come to this gala, where can they look online just to be able to find more of that information? Yeah, so they can go to our website, uh, www.lloydrescue.ca forward slash events, or they can just click on the events tab at the top of the website. Um, or they can get a hold of us. Uh, they can phone phone our office if they'd like tickets. We don't have a physical ticket we're giving out this year. It's kind of all just a digital format this year. So um, just to ease uh, those things. So, um, But yeah, if, if people are still wanting to get some tickets, there are still some available. But I suspect here in the next couple of weeks will be, will be uh, sold out. So uh, if you want to get them, get a hold of us or get on the website. Perfect. And is there anything more that you'd like to add on this uh, Sirens and Sapphires seventh annual gala, Ryan, that I may have missed out on? And I also want to throw that out there that it will be on October 1st. October 1st, um, a new MC we have coming back, uh, coming this year is Steve Shannon. Uh, we're so excited to have him come this year. Um, he's going to be uh, he's going to be a new addition to to our, our seventh annual gala. So we're we're excited to see what he brings to the table. We spoke to him a couple times and uh, I can assure you it's going to be a, an entertaining evening. So we're, we're excited to have him come back or to come for the first time. Great. Well, I'm sure everybody is looking forward to being able to come out to the seventh annual gala and be able to check this out, the new MC and having the live entertainment and everything. Sounds like it's going to be great this year. And once again, thank you so much for joining us today, Ryan. Thanks so much. And now it's time for today's Retrospect. Here's Blake Nath. This week in Retrospect. We take a ride to 92 to check out fuel prices across the country. After slowly rising over the past couple of months, Border City gas prices are beginning to decline. After sitting in the 51.9 cent a liter range for close to a month, the price has dropped 2 cents to 49.9. Earlier this summer, it had been as low as 46.4. Some station attendants speculate the change is due to a drop in sales, while others figure it's the result of a brief gas war in the battle ports. Depending on which side of the border you look at, Lloydminster is either on the high side or the low side. In the Alberta portion of the Midwest, Lloydminster, Vermilion, and Wainwright all hold down top spot at 49.9 for regular unleaded. Grand Center is unchanged at 47.9, and while it's still the cheapest, Elk Point is up 2 cents to 45.9. On the Saskatchewan side of the border, a steady string of 51.9s dominate. However, the Battle Ford saw a reprieve earlier this week when the price dropped considerably to 39.9. The gas war is said to have been triggered by one company wanting to show a customer appreciation. Lloydminster again holds down the low spot at 49.9. Compared to the latest round of national statistics, the Midwest is doing fairly well. Well, only Regina recorded a lower price at 43.9. However, to the east, prices are considerably higher. Toronto is just over 58 cents a liter. Montreal is the most expensive spot in Canada at nearly 62 cents. And looking to 97 at local tributes and reactions to the untimely passing of Princess Diana. My father. We for this border city woman, she was truly the people's princess. Ina Craig came to Canada from Britain 70 years ago, but has kept a close eye on her homeland and its royal family every day, especially Princess Diana. I take the Edmonton Journal and I always turn to that page and see if there's a picture of Di. <laughs> yes, and see what she's doing next. News of the horrible crash and Diana's death left Craig shaken and deeply saddened. I felt devastated, really. I couldn't believe it. You feel a sort of sense of personal loss for some reason or other because you identified with her more than perhaps the rest of the royal family. I think she's been a marvelous person. Uh, she's what Kipling wrote about in his poem, if, if you can walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. In regards to the future of the monarchy, she says it will continue, but believes it will change drastically. The 88-year-old says no one can replace the fallen princess for the charity she supported and in the eyes of the British people. She was never afraid to touch people, and that meant so much. My uh, son-in-law and daughter are up at the lake, at Bright Sand Lake, and I have a Union Jack up there. So I would phoned Bill, and I said, will you please fly the Union Jack at half-mast? 
till Saturday. And that's all for this week in Retrospect. Retrospect this week is brought to you by Webb's Ford. Worth your while to drive the extra mile. Webb's Ford in Vermilion. Well, it's time now for our first check-in with weather. It's a pleasure to welcome back Shelby Clark. And thank you so much, Mr. Jace Mackey. Glad to be back, you know, back to reality here after having that little vacation last week. But I know people who stepped in did an amazing job, so really great to hear. But now we're back to it. So uh, thank you for that introduction. Appreciate you. Now taking a first look at your weather forecast. So here in the border city, we are sitting at 25, seeing a beautiful start to our week. Uh, seeing that 25, and we have been seeing a lot more sun peaking behind those clouds. So definitely seen a much sunnier day today. So hopefully everybody got outside and enjoyed it. You know, had some nice outdoor activities planned. Hit up Bud Miller Park or maybe went in, uh, to the outdoor pool, whatever you had planned. But it was a beautiful day, so hopefully this will be continue on for the week, and we will be seeing it continue on, actually. And switching now to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, we're seeing lots of uh, 24, 25s over on this end, so definitely have warmed up quite a bit. 26s in uh, some other spots here with Vermilion up in Cold Lake and over in Edmonton there. Go a little bit lower to Provost here. Just seeing that 27 and over in Wayne White, they are seeing the warmest with that 28 degrees. So we're getting a little bit closer to that 30 degree mark for today, but we are just seeing in those mid 20s right now to higher 20s. So seeing some nice temperatures overall. So now over to our Saskatchewan side, we are seeing kind of the same conditions as what we are looking at on our Alberta side, seeing those 24 and 25s and most spots over on this end. Go a bit lower to Maidstone and North Battleford. Seeing that 26 in Macklin is seeing the warmest with that 27. So seeing some nice and beautiful uh, temperatures over on these spots as well. And for North Battleford overnight, they will be going down to a low of 11. So seeing those double digits uh, kind of continue on there. Slightly cooled down, but you know, still seeing a nice warm night for North Battleford. Then tomorrow, seeing that 30 degrees. So see, seeing that extreme uh, heat warning in effect definitely coming into tomorrow throughout the day. Seeing a mixture of some sun and cloud, although uh, it will be still a beautiful day. Cold Lake will be going out to a low of 12, so seeing a nice uh, temperature for their evening and throughout the night. And uh, condition-wise, they will be seeing a pretty calm evening as they head into tomorrow. They will also be seeing that 30 degrees with a lot more sun. So definitely going to be seeing that heat warning in effect, but seeing a beautiful day overall. So just make sure you are staying hydrated and staying safe. And for us, we will be going down to a low of 13, so seeing a warmer evening temperature for sure. Seeing a nice condition, then tomorrow we will be expecting that 30 degrees. So definitely going to be warming up throughout the week uh, as we were suspecting, already starting off pretty warm today. And now ending off with our three-day forecast, as we were saying, tomorrow 30 degrees, Wednesday seeing that 31, so even warming up uh, more on Wednesday with a mixture of some sun and clouds, so please make sure you are using that sunscreen when needed and staying hydrated. Then Thursday actually dropping down to that 22, so still not seeing too bad of a day, but seeing a lot more windy, uh, windier conditions on Thursday. That is the first look at your weather forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Welcome back to the show. A girl from the North Battleford area has been named to the Canadian Agriculture Youth Council. Our Thomas Wildman spoke to her about her role and plans for the upcoming term. Today we have Maddie Musica, one of the members of the Canadian Agricultural Youth Council. And she is here today to tell us about kind of what she's been doing and a little bit about her background. So thank you so much for being with us today, Maddie. Thank you for having me. So I grew up on my family's grain farm south of Battleford, Saskatchewan. I'm in my fourth year of agronomy at the U of S. This summer I worked at Richardson Pioneer as an agribusiness student in Elro, Saskatchewan. So Maddie, tell us a little bit about how you got to be part of the Canadian Youth Agricultural Council, kind of the application process, and then a little bit about what your jobs and responsibilities are on the council. So if I recall correctly, you answer questions online and contribute any ideas you have that could positively impact the Canadian egg industry. Once the finalists are selected from the first round, they will answer questions using videos. Once the videos are complete, the individuals in charge of the Canadian Youth Egg Council will reach out and ask more questions to get to know the individual better. We are an advisory body to the minister and the ministry. The council is commonly consulted by industry stakeholders and internal ministry teams to provide a youth perspective on new policies and initiatives. Each member that was selected represents youth voices in agriculture across the country, has an opportunity to provide input. As a council, we have the opportunity to set attainable goals and discuss our common interests. 
Within the council, there are different groups that focus on agriculture education, career pathways, and other topics relating to agriculture that the council has made a priority. Maddie, you came from a grain background. Have you been advising the council mostly on grain related topics or have you been kind of advising just on general topics that have come up so far on the Canadian Youth Agricultural Council? We have been talking a lot about just general problems within the ag industry, like the lack of agriculture education seen in curriculums across the country. And we've also been discussing Canada's Green Agriculture Plan in addition to the National Agriculture Labour Strategy. So Maddie, you were mentioning that this is your first time on the council. How important do you feel being part of such a very high profile group and kind of what other goals do you have while being on the council? To be a part of council so I can represent the farmers in Western Canada and give them a voice at the federal level. I want to make sure that the federal government recognizes the hard work our farmers do each and every single day. And I want to make sure the federal government is aware of the agronomics that go on behind the scenes instead of just implementing policies that could potentially harm or affect Western Canada agriculture production. Thank you so much for all the information, Maddie, and we wish you all the best on the Canadian Youth Agricultural Council. Awesome. Thank you for having me. And now here's a look at today's egg prices. Lakeland wrestlers wrapped up a three-day kids volleyball camp that took place on home court. The camp is structured to give participants from grades 6 to 12 a chance to develop basic skills in the sport like ball control. Current players from the wrestlers women's and men's volleyball team were present to instruct the younger group and give them the knowledge they need. Growing up like a coach has played a big role in my development in the sport. And so having a coach who can stand there and lead you through the skills is huge to like um, playing at a higher level. And so offering the kids these skills, um, will hopefully we'll see a lot more kids, you know, play at post-secondary levels or even professional levels, hopefully. I want to work on uh, like bumping and setting as it's important. And then serving is also another thing that I could work on. The wrestlers say over 100 kids attended the camp this year, which is the most in recent memory. Great to see that great turnout for that event and uh, now it's time to take a look at weather once again. Here's Shelby Clark. Again there, Mr. Jace Mackey. Yes, now taking another extended look at your weather forecast, we will be starting off with our central zone of our provinces here. And now checking out our Alberta side over on this end, we are still seeing between those 25-26 uh, degrees in most spots over on this end. Over in Jasper, they are seeing the coolest though at that 22 degree mark, but we will start to warm up from here for sure throughout the, the rest of the week there as we will be looking on a little bit later on. Switching so, you know, over to our Saskatchewan side for our uh, central zone here, they are seeing uh, kind of the same conditions as what we are looking at on our Alberta side but most spots are just seeing around 23 24 degrees in most spots over on this end down in north battleford they are still quite warm still at that 26 over in saskatoon seeing the warmest condition over on this end at 27 degrees and now going over to our northern uh, zone right now to check them out they definitely have warmed up quite a bit most spots just seeing that 23 24 degrees so definitely have warmed up but we go a little bit higher up with stony rapids near Nam city unfortunately they are seeing some uh, cooler conditions for today even seeing that high chance of that precipitation that they are experiencing right now with that 17 and 18 degrees just under that 20 degree mark then over in Wollstone Lake they have just reached 20 degrees so uh, for the most part over on this end most spots are seeing not too bad of temperatures and going back to Alberta side here for our northern zone they are still they are seeing some nice warm temperatures with those uh, 22s in Fort McMurray Slave Lake we go a little bit over on this end here high level Fort Chipone and down in Grand Prairie they all are at that 23 degrees over in Peace River just at 24 so still seeing some uh, moderately warm temperatures over in our northern zone for the most part in most spots and switching over to our southern 
sunburn zone as we expected, you know, definitely seeing the warmest conditions closer to that 30 degree mark than what we are seeing in our central zone. 27 up in Calgary and Coronation. We go over to Lethbridge. They are the warmest there with that 29. So just under 30 degrees. So seeing that heat warning in effect for most spots over on this end as well. So hopefully you're experiencing a, a nice, a nice day, experiencing a nice day and having a great day, but also staying safe out there, you know, staying hydrated and using that sunscreen when needed. Medicine Ad is just under that mark with that 28 degrees while we go over to Banff. They are seeing the coolest conditions over on this end with that 23. And going back over to our Saskatchewan side here for our southern zone. They aren't seeing too bad. They are matching more with us in the central area. Uh, Kindersley and Swift Current Moosha are seeing the warmest with the 27, 28. Go a little bit more over to on this end. Regina is at 26 and Yorkton and Estevan are seeing the coolest with that 23 and 24. But now going back across the region and looking at what we will expect throughout our evening and throughout the night tonight for our temperatures. We're going to be seeing pretty nice temperatures and also seeing even nicer conditions. Uh, most spots will be expecting that low of 11 to night. Miriam and uh, Meadow Lake Provost will be seeing that low of 10, while Wainwright, Isla Cross, and Bonnie will be seeing the warmest with a low of 13 to 14 degrees uh, throughout the evening and throughout the night. And most spots, as you can see, are going to be seeing some nice conditions. So won't be really expecting uh, too much of uh, crazy storms or some precipitation for most spots. And ending off with our seven day forecast for here in the border city, seeing those 30 degrees for Tuesday and Wednesday. So get ready for some beautiful days coming up uh, these next few days this week. Thursday, we will drop down to that 22, so slightly cooler with that a uh, lot more wind there, but then we'll warm it back up for our weekend. So get ready. We're going to see a beautiful weekend coming ahead and seeing that warm pattern continue on into next week. That is another look at your weather forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Checking in today with the Lloydminster Salvation Army. Alicia McLeod joins me today. Uh, first of all, can you give us an update on how things have been so far this summer? So this summer has been quite busy, much busier than I anticipated it would be. Um, but we had VBS, uh, Vacation Bible School, for those who don't know what that is. Um, it has been a, it was a great experience. We had smaller numbers, but coming out of COVID to have the first time for that to happen is actually, we were okay with that as a way to kind of transition back into some more in-person uh, programming like that. Um, we've also been able to send seven kids to camp through fundraising opportunities that we had. Uh, so that's very exciting. Seven, six kids to camp. Uh, and it's been a long time since the Salvation Army here in Lloydminster has sent kids. So to be able to have that was very exciting. Um, and then just with even uh, our family services and our food bank, uh, we are seeing a steady increase of people in need as far as food supplies. And so we uh, have been very busy in the food bank with that. Um, and so it's just hard to stay on top of all of that uh, week to week, but it is coming and it's uh, it's exciting to see the community come together um, in this way to support us, support others. Now, that's something I uh, wanted to talk about, being able to send kids to camp. You say it's the first time in a while that the Lloydminster Salvation Army has been able to do that. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the fundraisers that led up to that and what it was like to get that community support to give kids that uh, good opportunity? We were actually able to take some of our, we, we run a silent auction uh, periodically here. And so we were able to take some of our silent auction items and direct the money um, for that to camp. And I think, I don't know for sure, but I, I, a lot of people tend to go, oh, okay, it's to help send the kid to camp. I'm going to bid on that just in order to kind of help support that in a way. Um, we also just put it out there that if anyone wanted to walk in with donations, um, they could offer a way to send a kid to camp that way as well. Um, and we did a bottle drive around our neighborhood. Um, so between those three things, we actually were able to fully send the six kids, which was fantastic. Um, we would have been content if the, you know, we still had the parents had to pay a portion, but we covered and then some. So uh, that's just so exciting to see. Um, and we're so grateful for the community and the support that they have helped us with in order to do that. Because uh, camp is such a valuable experience for young kids. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I just think it's a, a well worth opportunity. So in the future, we will be doing more fundraising to help with camp and other things like that as well. It's awesome to hear that kids were able to get that experience and that uh, there was no financial barriers to that. I uh, wanted to move on uh, a little bit over to uh, the food bank. You brought it up uh, a little earlier that uh, there's been a steady increase in demand for the food bank. Has it been like that for the past couple of months? We have. Um, over the past few months, I think, now I, I don't work as directly with the food bank, but um, from what I understand, you know, there's every week we're getting new families in. So on top of the families we're already assisting, there is even more coming in. Um, so we are actually looking for a few items. So some of the things are uh, cereal and canned pastas. We are low on uh, diapers, uh, specifically size three and up. Uh, and then just anything really like chunky soups, hamburger helper, peanut butter, all of those kinds of things we're quite low on. Um, and because of the steady increase, we just can't seem to keep the food in and it's constantly going out. So if anybody would like to donate um, any of those things, or if they want more specific as to uh, what, like a, a more specific list, they can always call our office too and we can, and we can coordinate that with them as well. Mm -hmm. When you're seeing more food going out the doors, you want those donations to be increasing coming in as well, because uh, we want to make sure that everyone is able to get everything that they need here in this community. And uh, speaking about communities, another event that's coming up uh, uh, in a couple of weeks on uh, September 11th is Community Days being hosted by the Salvation Army. I was wondering if you could share a little bit more with us about what that event entails. So on September 11th, it's a Sunday morning from 11 to 2, we're going to have uh, our church service in the parking lot. It's going to be a short service, uh, but then we're going to have hot dogs, hamburgers, some games, and just some fun activities to connect with the community. Um, so anybody is welcome to come, um, and you can pop in, you can stay the whole time, however you want to do it, but from 11 to 2 on Sunday, September 11, just as a way to connect with um, not just our physical neighborhood of where we're located, but the greater community of Lloyd. All right, thank you so much for your time. It was great talking with you today. It was good. Thank you so much for this. Furniture Set and Design, supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloyd Minster. I'm happy to be joined by Kyla and Bella Thompson this morning, familiar faces on our show. Today, we have a little bit of a different aspect to the interview. So Kyla and Bella, thank you for joining me. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Well, Bella, I <laughs> want to talk to you a little bit first because you recently went on Instagram and people were asking you questions about some back to school tips. And I thought they were really, really good. So I want to, yeah, I want to ask you some questions now. So the first question for you, Bella, is what is the best way, do you think, to adjust uh, when you're going into a new school? How to be calm. Yeah. How do you, like, when you're going to a new school, you said, ah, do you remember? We talked about it last be time. Be happy about new school supplies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> and what happens, Bella, because kids sometimes are really anxious when they go to school, you know, it's a lot of things to take in, new teachers and that kind of thing. So what would you tell kids if they're going to school and they're really a little bit anxious about the first day? Pack a yummy lunch and be excited for it. Awesome. And what, was... I, what I always have for lunch is those yummy lunch bowls. My oh. favorite is the hot dog, the pizza, and the nachos with oh. the little cookies. Yeah, those are fantastic. <laughs> yeah, they're really um, yummy. Yeah. Now, Bella, what about new kids? Because it's always tough being a new kid in a classroom that's maybe moved over the summer somewhere. So mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you tell students to do when it comes to um, treating the new kids well and, and introducing them to friends? Um, greet them, offer to give them a tour, say hello. Yeah. 
Fantastic. That's some really good advice. And I'm going to ask you one more question, and then this is kind of a tough one. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. there are some kids at school that uh, often have to deal with bullying. So if you know of kids that are getting bullied, what should what should they do, Bella? What's your advice? Just ignore them. Think of positive stuff. Look for some nice. And look for someone nice. Uh -huh. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Bella. And Kyla, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Bella because the last yeah. time we spoke, obviously she was on the list for a bowel transplant and, and I'm guessing she's still on that list. Yes. I've been waiting for so long and I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that about sums up how we feel. Yeah. Um, it, it's been two years now. Um, August, uh, July, August of 2020 is when we first went to Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto and she became listed and so it's it's been two years of a wait so far and um, in those two years we tried to work with her uh, medical teams to offer management for her uh, medical conditions as best we can and she's doing really good most days but there are a lot of hard I days. I really hope it's not three years. Yeah. yeah like she she's really looking forward to the chance to um, you know ha have a bowel transplant and, and all that can do for her to help her feel better. Well, and one of the things that we'd like to talk about in relation to that, Kyla, is the importance of organ donation. Unfortunately, yeah. Canada doesn't have a very good record when it comes to organ donation. So what do you encourage people to do to um, uh, not only obviously sign their cards, but uh, you know, when it comes to their families and, and uh, promoting organ donation? Yeah, uh, the number one thing I would say is have the conversation with your family um everyone in your family as, as much as you can and you know share our story if it helps others understand um that there are some really hard circumstances that come up when um or if you know you you or a loved one needs to donate your organs and but those hard conversations can help families like ours and kids like Bella that are waiting for that gift of life um and uh, I, I really hope Canada can can build our track letter track record um and and become the best in the world that would mean so much to our canadian kids now you in the meantime have you do so much to help with bella's medical needs anybody who follows you on your social media knows that there's so much that you are doing every day um what can people do to support you and your family kyla i'm my merch <laughs> yeah we, <laughs> we um when bella's medical needs became so prominent in our life it really um did not make it easy for me to maintain my teaching job. And so um, we really started to embrace the content creatorship role I have anyways, and that's been really good, but we've also created uh, merch. Um, so my husband and Bella and I have created logos um, for Bella Brave and 30 to 50% of our items go towards supporting Bella and our medical journey. And Tyler, <laughs> what? And where, uh, where can people buy the merch? What's the best place to go to, to get that online? Yes. Bellabrave.com. Our, our website is Bellabrave.com. Bella Bella-brave.com. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you guys for joining best me. And Bella, Bella, one more question for you. Oh what gosh, are you please. excited about when going back to school? I'm excited to uh, use my yummy Lunchables and use my um, new school supplies and my sparkly green ring binder. <laughs> you have a new, yeah, you got a sparkle binder and new school surprise supplies you're pretty pumped about. <laughs> well, Bella, thank you for giving us the back to school tips today. And I hope you have a fun first day back at school too. Kyla, thank you as well for joining us. And once again, if people are looking to find you on social media, where yeah. is uh, the best address to locate you? Yeah, our um, our primary uh, social media is TikTok, which is at Kyla CT. We live in Swift Current. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, right, and well, Instagram and as well. Is, yeah. And, and, our province, and our province is called Saskatchewan. That's right. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, once again for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I know we'll be chatting with you again soon. Have a great day. Yeah, Bye. Thanks, Casey. Bye. 
In and off, we're taking another quick look at your seven day forecast. Now we will be seeing those 30s and 31 Tuesday and Wednesday. So get ready for some nice high temperatures for the next couple days. Please make sure you got your water ready, sunscreen ready and finding shade when needed because they're going to be scorchers. Thursday will cool down to 22. Seen a, expecting a little bit more wind that day, but then warming it back up for Friday for our weekend with 26. Then seeing that 30 again for Saturday with a mixture of some sun and cloud and seeing that warm streak continue on into next week. Thanks for that, Shelby, and thank you for joining us for our first hour of primetime local news. But stick with us. Our second hour continues next.